I want to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, so he's representing Discover Global Network, um, responsible for digital acceptance in EMEA, with many years' experience in, in payment solution provision, um, and now working with Discover. So please give a very warm welcome to Mike Lovelock. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. So I'm um, very pleased to be here and talking to you today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, experience, the new battleground in commerce and payments. So I wanted to start with a um, start with a, a phrase there. The pace of change has never been this fast, yet it will never be this slow again. Um, for me, this, this is true of both payments and commerce. I think with all the, the change we see in the marketplace, all the new entrants coming into the space, there's a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities that, that's created by that. I think if we think back to five years ago, you had um, people spinning up like Stripe and Square, you had uh, wallet technologies like Google, uh, Google Wallet coming into the market. You had telco, um, telco initiatives like Weave coming in as well. Um, if you fast forward to or come back to the current day now, um, then those set of challenges perhaps don't look as, as phasing as they were back then. You have now open banking. Some of you might have heard of BSD2. Um, we also have operating system level wallets now like Apple Pay, like Google Pay, making contactless accessible to millions of consumers. Um, and you also have network tokenization as well, ramping up and growing in scale. Um, so if we dare to think ahead five, um, five years time, then we might think back to the current state and think actually things were just getting started uh, at that point. Um, so Alan just touched on, on his definition of a digital merchant. I thought that was interesting. A good, good segue for me. Um, so there's, there's nowhere, no space really where um, the pace of change I just referenced is more sort of apparent than, than in, in digital commerce for me. Um, a digital merchant, maybe 10, 12 years ago, I think you, you can think of the, the time when people like Netflix, Spotify were, were starting their businesses. Um, media streaming, digital media streaming, you had digital service providers, the likes of Uber, uh, that were spinning up as well. And I think that, that those would be your typical answers if you ask someone these days to define a digital merchant. Um, but I'd, I'd like to challenge that definition today, and that's kind of um, the basis of my presentation, is to really look at challenging that perception. So. I'd like to suggest that today every merchant is becoming a digital merchant. Um, and to, to, to exemplify that, I think if you, if you challenge yourself to think of an environment um, furthest away from that, perhaps someone, somewhere like the hospitality sector, um, I think if you were asked the question 10 years or so ago, I don't think a hotel would have been your first default uh, answer when you were asked to define a, or give an example of a digital merchant. But I think the, the opportunities, the challenges I referenced a minute ago, um, that are being generated by all the change, all the ecosystem um, uh, innovation, all the developments we're seeing, is something that a, a hotel chain, someone in this industry, can really take the opportunity to, to change the way they're transacting and engaging with their customers. So I think for me, if we take a look at uh, the Marriott app as an example of how the changes in digital commerce have been used by a merchant to, to improve that customer experience, and if we just walk through some examples of that, I think um, you'll start to, to see where I'm coming from. So the Marriott app itself today, um, moving away from previously you know, a very fixed infrastructure, very physical experience, and taking that journey to becoming more of a digital one, you can see that the Marriott app itself now gives the ability to, to reserve on, on, online within the app. You can also check in to the hotel uh, before you arrive. Not only that, but you can also now swerve front desk if that's your style, and you can provision your key to, uh, to your smartphone, to your device, go straight up to your room and let yourself, let yourself into your room using, using that. Um, if you then get into your room, it's quite late, you've had a, a late arrival 
Um, you don't necessarily want to go down to the restaurant. You can actually use the, the chat bot within the app. And you can order some, some food from guest services or concierge. And then finally, um, loyalty is also built into that experience for, from the Marriott app too. So to try and get the, get the consumers from Marriott to, to keep revisiting, um, they will display to you your, your point status, your tiering, try and encourage you to go back and you know, reach that, that next level of, um, of loyalty with, with Marriott and also try and get you to spend some of those points. They're going to go back to them and you know, maybe, maybe um, shift some of the volume away from, uh, from more of the, the aggregating uh, travel agencies and that type of maybe friendly competitors that these types of merchants have. So um, I think... I think it's fair to say that digital experience are, experiences are becoming kind of um, the basis of competition. Um, and the, the, the growing influence of the digital technologies is, uh, is really allowing uh, merchants to, to build a very customized experience, one that suits uh, all different types of, uh, of shoppers. And, and as that, those expectations continue to evolve from the consumers, uh, the merchants are able to, to flex and, and move alongside that. So um, the shoppers of today, I think, are not necessarily looking to, to just buy a product, simply buy a product from a merchant. They're looking for an experience, that process of buying something to be an actual experience that they can, uh, they can partake upon. Um, and, and ideally, that, that experience should be one built around, for me, three Cs, if you like. So convenience, context, and control. Um, if I, if I look to my own payment preferences and experiences for an example of this, I found it hard to look past um, Amazon and my, my preference for, for Amazon as an online marketplace. So um, for me, they, they provide um, the interaction that covers all of these bases. So um, if, uh, if we've run out of nappies in the house um, for my kids uh, and we want to make a purchase and, and get those delivered, then that's a very easy process. It can be a one-click purchase. Uh, I'm also a, a Prime subscriber with Amazon, so I can get those next day. For me, that's almost become a, a basis of expectation around delivery as well, having that next day, uh, that next day option. Um, if I am perhaps looking to buy a new mobile phone or something like that, Amazon also gives me the ability to not only look around at different reviews, take advice from other uh, consumers, but also, I can, I can perhaps put a couple of, couple of phones in the basket, consider what accessories I might want alongside that. So contextually, I can be pushed an offer around associated headphones that will work, um, that type of thing. And then you get into, obviously, cases and stuff as well. So my message there is, is you can have a, a more drawn out experience that, that, that Amazon provides. And you might add those to a, to a wish list and come back to those later on. So they're providing that different um, contextual experience, but also one that you're in control of if you want to make that purchase instantly, very quickly. You don't want to hang about uh, with your nappy choice. They're all pretty much the same in my experience. But if you want to invest a bit more time in some more research, then using something like a wish list, coming back to that later on, thinking more about that purchase is also supported. So I think if you look at the center of that graphic as well, the, the reward for, for merchants there um, who are able to tick all those boxes is, is around loyalty of the consumers. People will go back to enjoy that experience, or it's a convenient experience. Uh, and that will in itself obviously generate, generate revenue for the merchant. Um, so just to pick out a couple of stats there to, to, to prove the points I was just making. So 50% of consumers want to complete an online uh, in-app purchase in one click. So again, 50% uh, very divided number there. Some do, some don't. Um, and moving over to pick out the last stat on the right-hand side, 60% still say they want to reserve items online uh, in-app over the phone and pay, your pay uh, and collect in-store. So there's still that, that need for um, that, that experience is split over a couple of different channels, so the in-store uh, and the online or in-app experience. Um, but I think building, building these uh, experiences and crafting those uh, digital experiences uh, is challenging, challenging, and there's lots of things to consider when you're, when you're approaching that as a merchant. So um, being digital uh, gives you the ability to move into new geographies, new markets very quickly. Um, but that presents its own 
challenges and opportunities as well around scaling up. So consumers are looking for a, a localized experience. They expect a personalized experience from you as a merchant. So considerations around things like local language, local payment preferences need to be considered um, as part of uh, that journey from a, from a merchant perspective of, of going digital and enhancing that digital experience. Uh, alternative payment methods, local payment methods are now numbered in the hundreds um, as well. So um, considering which ones to deploy in which markets is obviously something very important to consider and make a, a good judgment around um, and looking to, to prioritize how those are displayed uh, on screen as well, ideally. Um, that you can't really understate the importance of that. For example, if you're a merchant moving into a new territory like the Netherlands uh, for e-commerce, you need to make sure you have Ideal enabled because that is 60% uh, market share in the Netherlands for e-commerce volume, for example. So really, really key things to, to, to assess. Um, going digital also brings new channels of engagement or requires new channels of engagement as well. So. If you're targeting millennials, then um, clearly they're going to be on Instagram, they're going to be on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest a lot of the time. So you're going to want to use those as channels to push messaging to those, that consumer base uh, to target those. Um, but you need to also be aware that you need to look after other channels of engagement. There's still a place in my mind for, for email messaging and campaigns in other channels too. So something else to, to consider. Um, selling into new environments as well. So there's a graphic of connected devices on there, the, the smartwatch and the connected speaker. Um, these are examples of, of new innovation in the market around digital, and, and within they bring new challenges and opportunities, like we mentioned before. But things like the, uh, the Alexa speaker, uh, they're becoming commerce platforms in themselves, another opportunity to, to interact with consumers. And, and I think as time continues to evolve, people will be more and more comfortable with maybe ordering um, through those mediums as well. So maybe I'll be saying to, to Amazon, order me some nappies next day, just out loud in my kitchen, rather than going onto the app or, uh, or onto the website to do that. Um, personalization as well, another challenge. So there still needs to be that consideration around a, a tailored experience, a contextually relevant experience for those consumers. Um, online in the app, but also I think you need not to forget about in-store. So I think the, the nirvana of an experience in-store is going to be one where you can walk in uh, into a store, perhaps the merchant knows who you are, knows about your, your shopping history and preferences, and there can really be a one-to-one -one interaction there, a personalized experience where they can consult you on, on the product you're looking to buy and, and, uh, and, and sell add-ons to you at the same time, value adds perhaps. So, Hopefully from that, it's, it's clear that this isn't an easy, an easy thing to, to consider. There's lots of considerations, lots of challenges, but equally lots of opportunities with, um, with addressing the digital experience uh, challenges. So how can we shrink all of those things down into some, into some key messages? Um, so I would say we can define digital leaders by, by four sort of similar categories or areas of, uh, of focus. Um, they all have good partners. So I think partnership, certainly as a, a discover mantra, is something very important to us. And I think having good partners on board um, as a merchant is, is key. So if you think back to the alternative payment method example I gave, you're going to want, as a merchant, a partner who can give you good consultative advice around you know, which, which markets you're looking to go into within your own strategy and, and which payment methods to consider for those but also to, to take you into that next level of your strategy and advise, you know, have you considered these other markets? Have you considered um, targeting a market like Brazil for some cross-border spend? And, you know, do you understand the impact of, of enabling uh, Discover and bringing in that, that domestic scheme play into your ecosystem? So partners are, are a key consideration. Um, security, so we hear a lot about data, big data. Um, Again, there are the regulations associated with that. So security uh, is a key criteria for consideration, uh, one that digital merchants take very seriously uh, and will need to continue to do so, of course. Um, network tokenization that I referenced earlier, is, uh, I would wrap up into this, uh, this as well. So deploying that 
uh, and doing that in a way that's not going to affect that customer experience, it's not going to cause shopping cart um, abandonment is, uh, is something else to consider and, and, and something you need to do well. And consistency, again, to refer back to what I mentioned about the, the different channels, the in-store, the in-app, I think that there's an expectation from consumers, from shoppers, that um, that experience is consistent across all those different uh, channels. So I wouldn't expect to go, in to, uh, to, go to a website and maybe pre-order something using one payment method and then go in, in store to complete that purchase and not be able to use that same payment method. So you need that consistency not only in look and branding, but also payment options and other elements of the experience like that. Uh, and then finally, choice. So clearly, um, enabling that, that, that shopper to have uh, that element of control, that feeling that it's their choice, how they shop, how they engage with you, uh, is a key thing to make sure that uh, it's catered for within this new digital experience. So some, some stats or trends, finally, to, to back those, uh, those statements up. So there's no better time to invest uh, in, in the digital space, I would say, or digital experiences, preparing for this. So to pull for, for some stats that were provided to us by 451 Research, um, if you look at the, the shift of spending to digital channels between now and 2022, there's going to be a six-fold increase on the amount of spend shifting into digital in comparison to that, that spend in store, six-fold more in, in the digital space. From a volume perspective, nearly $6 trillion uh, will be spent in the digital, digital commerce sector, for B2B commerce um, in 2022. And from a growing wallet share perspective as well, so $1 out of every five will be spent in a digital channel in, in 2022. So um, thank you for your time. I think if I would leave you with three things to, to take from that presentation, I would say um, the, the accelerating pace of change. Things are changing very quickly and rapidly. I would say partnerships is key. Have good partners on board. Um, and then just those, those three Cs would be the other thing for me, contextual, convenient, and control uh, within building out that digital experience. So thank you very much. Great job, Mike.